night, guys. It is a dark, gray, yuck winter day. Here in mid-October, in the collapse of global industrial civilization up here at Bugs in a Jar Farm in upstate New York. Well, uh, <laughs> I guess you can hear the north wind battering the front door of the tiny house. So anyway, since I am uh, too scared to step outside of the door of the tiny house today, just sitting here doing what I do every day, and that's just hanging out with my imaginary friends here uh, on YouTube. Did I say it was Tuesday, October 19th, 2022, or somewhere around there? But speaking of my imaginary friends on YouTube, uh, this is, we're going to hear from a man that we have heard from many times uh before and he is certainly one of my imaginary friends i have never talked to this man you know i've been trying to get him to agree to an interview for about five years the the invitation is still open for an interview whatever this man uh wants to do it and of course we know who we're talking about and that is none other than Andy the Gardener. Andy the Gardener from over there in, uh, in Zombie Island, otherwise known as England. And he was weighing in on the debate in my uh, little snippet of the collapse. Why I do talking about me, why I do not buy into the BS fear-mongering about 450 new plants melting down. And uh, hearing from both sides, this is, an, you know, this is one of these active debates. I think I've made my statement, but uh, Andy the gardener is telling me, not so fast, Sam. <clears throat> Take it away, Andy. I reservedly agree. Humans being removed from a region or regions by a small contained nuclear incident is definitely a good thing. I personally recommend a human exclusion zone, roughly the circumference of the solar system. The benefits to biodiversity from the removal of humans and their totalitarian agriculture and other pressures far, far outweighs paltry amounts of radiation, and I put emphasis on paltry, because the problem with this thinking, meaning, you know, using Chernobyl as an example of why I'm not uh, concerned about all the rest of them melting down. Because the problem with this thinking is that it is not possible to say much about the effects of 500 unconstrained nuclear meltdowns bathing the entire planet with very high doses of radiation for millions of years, when all we have to go on is one pretty ins insignificant incident. Well, I think we have a few more than one. I mean, Fukushima makes two, and I could have, I pretty much could have inserted Fukushima for Chernobyl and uh, Three Mile Island, and uh, we're getting ready to have another one over there in Ukraine. So, we have a little bit more evidence than one. But anyway, back to Andy. Uh, when all we have to go on is one pretty insignificant incident that was largely contained by a functioning industrial civilization. Humans simply just do not know if life can survive more radiation than that. 
precisely organized genetic material and cellular machinery might simply turn to random mush when exposed to radiation over a certain critical threshold. There might be long-term attrition making life impossible over a few generations, even with natural selection constantly weeding out all the horrific embryonic mutants. What happens if all individuals are unviable? I don't know. Nobody knows. My gut feeling this is probably sci-fi BS and that genetic code and its myriad survival machine bodies will be able to cope largely intact. And uh, that pretty much sums up my argument, uh, Andy. I, uh, my gut feeling this is probably, well, I would change sci-fi into Doomer, BS, and that genetic code in its myriad survival machine bodies will be able to cope largely intact. But, but who knows? Uh, as Andy says, nobody knows. This is one more reason this debate is completely pointless. I am an entomologist. I thought that Andy was an architect. But anyway, um, I am an entomologist, so as long as insects are okay, that's all that matters to me. And I am sure plants will ride, out th will ride things out okay too. Who cares about the big animals? <coughs> they usually get eradicated by mass extinction events anyway. They are pretty much toast now anyway due to the global warming locked in, which will also get worse the longer civilization continues. So yes, for many reasons, not the least that humans are not going to change, stop what they do, or heal the planet. It would be better if civilization collapsed and left and life, if civilization collapsed and left life alone to deal with the consequences than letting civilization continue and then having even worse consequences later. It is the same with that other person's global dimming argument. And I'm not going to go off on my opinions on the global dimming argument. If, that is, if it is going to happen and only getting worse, better let it be expressed now than later. The best scenario is that all nuclear plants are shut down as soon as possible and the radioactive shit stored under mountains somewhere before industrial civilization commits Harikari by some method other than full-on nuclear Armageddon. But human beings, but humans being the brain-dead fuckwits that they are, that ain't gonna happen, at least intentionally. I unreasonably still think, because I don't want to die, there is still a 50% ch chance things will not end by nuclear war. But the fact is, the fact is, humans are not going to shut those damn nuke plants down, imagining they will provide energy for their post-carbon flying car fantasy utopia. 
so they will all inevitably melt down one day, barring divine intervention, and then we will see what happens, I guess. So my response to Andy the gardener was, now that St. Greta Thunberg has thrown her pint-sized weight behind keeping the nukes burning, I'm keeping the nukes humming along to save us from burning coal and gas, divine intervention does not stand a chance. And so now, of course, Andy has to weigh in on St. Greta Thunberg. <clears throat> St. Greta, being focused on the big bad of global warming, like most other culturally acceptable enviros, clearly has not gone out of her single-issue comfort zone and perused a graph of all energy usage. If she had, she would immediately notice renewables and nuclear energy is but a thin sliver of techno BS buoyed up by a Pacific Ocean quantity of fossil fuels. Each of the trinity of oil, coal, and gas outweigh renewables like a blue whale outweighs a small child environmental prodigy. All the hopium on the planet is never, ever, ever, ever going to make nuclear and renewables replace that amount of energy. Ever or make the slightly larger amount that will be built not totally dependent on fossil fuels anyway. I think it's a shame if Greta had viewed this simple graph, I reckon she would have been able to demand a much bigger check from the nuclear industry for promoting it. Am I being too nasty? Who cares? <laughs> uh, we love you, you nasty curmudgeon of the Doomosphere. So anyway, amen. Uh, once again, Brother Andy Gardner, whenever you're ready to come on the show, Andy, and uh, share your insightful wisdom about how you think this whole thing is going to play out. Uh, you know where to find me. But anyway, i got to wrap this up because uh, I need to get ready to head to Lowe's Home Improvement Store for the third time in three days. But that is another rant for another place. My guys. Well...